got a big, a big, obviously a very important factor when we're racing here is the, the tyres. So we've come up to Metzlo, which is the, the, the manufacturer I use and always have used here at the TT. Metzler and Pirelli are very, very similar, but they, it's quite specific here with the high speeds and uh, the tyres obviously go through a little more than you would do on a standard short circuit. So front tyre isn't too much of an issue. We run a, I, I generally use a K1 front, which is the same as say an SE1 Pirelli. Um, but the rear tyres, these are all the fresh tyres obviously Metzler have bought over for myself and other competitors throughout the event. There are other options, but this is the go-to tyre that most people use. But the rear tyres, these are like a coded, kind of a development race tyre, but we run a, a hard centre, like a, a dual compound. So the edges of the tyre have a, say like an SC1 or zero-ish compound, um, but then a stiff band in the middle to um, deal with not just the high speeds, but something we get here that you don't get on on a short circuit is the duration at high speed. You know, we're, we're 191 hour plus on a bumpy A road. The tire leaves the ground a lot. And in that minuscule moment, the tire spins. And then when it comes back into contact, the tire's trying to re-grip. So it's like, it's hell for the rear tire at that point. So they have to make this section of the tire stronger um, to, to deal with that, which, um, it, it affects a little bit uh, rider feel as you drop off of that, as you tip into a corner, you can definitely feel that as a rider, but it's better than the scent, better than the scent of a tire falling out and uh, that would be a bigger issue. So, um, you know, these, uh, I, I've, as I said, I've always ridden on these and this is my, my go-to tire. We, over the years we've tested and developed different Feeling things. in the front, I push, I push, but uh, it's no good. Uh. Just because you're not riding, Lee. Yeah, hey, you, got, you got the dog cage off, though. Yeah, the size of that car. <laughs> uh, uh, I've lost where I was. He's thrown He's me thrown out. He's you off, honey. Uh, other, other things, you know, a critical thing here with tyres is uh, running pressure. You can set a, t uh, a pressure off the warmer. Um, the temperature, the working temperature of the tyre generally goes up and down a little bit from, from that. So it's, it's, quickly as possible when I would come in off the course um, they are checking the tyre pressure to see what and get as close to reading uh, as close as to the running pressure as we can uh, and then we can set the warmers before I go out to sort of correlate for that so it's as accurate as possible but um, sometimes we run a little stiffer just to help support the tyre a little bit more with the some of the harsh bumps you get here on the side of the tyre with lean angle the tyre can kind of fold through so uh, something else we've tested in the past is like a stiffer sidewall to hold the tyre up more. Um, some Metzler riders prefer that, some don't. It's sort of personal preference, but um, the sort of, I'd say the evolution and the development never really stops. We're always trying new things, but um, I've kind of always had a go-to tyre that I end up running here and um, it's worked, worked well enough for me. So yeah, in a couple of days, these will all be getting ripped around here and torn up around the TT course and, uh, and then back in a scrap pile over there shortly afterwards. <laughs> but um, it's a big, big project this. They have one Arctic here full of tyres, a big awning there where they, the riders bring up, drop them off this side, they go through the sort of production line and come out the other side with nice fresh rubber on and, uh, and a hefty bill. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's it, it's part of, part of it and um, another little piece of the puzzle of the TT. So look, a little bit of, it's not particularly secret, but this is, I would assume, this tyre was for John McGuinness at TT from Metzler, look. But um, this actually was used by Dean Harrison, did two laps, so I won't drag it out. But there you can see a little bit more the general wear, this band in the middle where the stiffer band is, which there might be, a, some of them wear more, and it just drops off the edge. And you can see that the much, the, the big difference in wear between the harder compound in the centre and then the edge, the sidewall of the tyre is uh, works a little different. So, and that everything slicks now. Super Sport, Super Stock, and Super Bike were on slick tyres, so um, it's pretty consistent in that manner. And it's a big bike. We'll do. We'll be doing. We wouldn't do two, more than two laps on a rear tyre on the big bikes. Uh, oh, sorry, apart from that, Super Stock is a three-lap race with no wheel change. So. That's one thing we must do in practice for me as a rider to understand the feeling of a, t a tire on its third lap. So, um, which we, we haven't really pushed that yet because day first practice was um, 
limited laps and also like first laps always steady so I need to know how the tyre works on three hard laps if that makes sense three race pace laps ish um, to understand how much grip the bot tyre sort of holds for lap three which is usually the fastest lap and the, and the lap when you're Probably, I mean, it's maximum effort every lap, but often the third lap, when you're chasing your pit board, you might be battling for a podium and you're trying to get everything out of it. So uh, you don't want to get to the lap three and then be out of rubber and out of tire. So it's crucial to kind of test these things in practice week. Um, there's so many boxes we try to tick and get through with bike setup, tire life, fuel efficiency, and loads of things, suspension and allowing for, I'll go into it in another video, but like, uh, the bike handling well on a full tank of fuel with 24 litres and then towards the second half of the last lap with maybe only 6 litres is a big difference in weight on the top of the bike which kind of uh, upsets things or can upset things so you always a compromise with setup to get the thing working okay everywhere so yeah Thank you, mate. cheers no worries yep Certainly, thank you very much. Anywhere you want. Thank you very much, sir. Much appreciate Thank you. Cheers. Anywhere, mate. Beautiful. Always Thank you. Cheers. One question I get asked a lot with people by looking at the bikes is why we have this is actually an intermediate tyre, but often we have like a wet tyre in or something, but for moving the bikes around up to the up to the Park Fermi assembly area or in and out the truck, we use like a what's called a transport tyre. So um, then that way the race or riding track tyres are constantly on, on heat. They'll be up on the rack on, on warmers and they'll swap them out. They'll literally push the bike up because you could be sat for half an hour in scrutineering queue, um, which is uh, it's not healthy for a tyre, especially a race tyre, to be up and down in temperature. We kind of get them off the off the shelf, on the rim, they go on a warmer and stay warm until they're used. And if we're going to reuse a tyre um, after a session, then um, yeah. then then it will be bagged up, rewarmed when I come in off track, and then allowed to it will cool down slowly rather than a kind of ramp in temperature can affect the performance of a tyre. So ultimately, the tyre would come off the shelf be raced on two laps and in front front tire will do six laps but um, or probably more actually but we'd only do six on in a race um, but it's kind of all about tire life in not necessarily when I'm riding but off the bike as well we caress them and look after them as best we can so they work to their to their, to their potential Nearly ready, we're just doing a last couple of uh, bits we wanted to check and um, they've called us for scrutineering so the bike's on its way now and this will, will be following suit in a couple of minutes so yeah, ready to rock. to make sure the places where oil would come out of potentially uh, is lock wired. There's nothing loose. It's a bit of a double check. I mean, we're all, I say professional mechanics, but we try our best to make sure everything's right. And then it's just nice to, that these guys are like a double check. Um, they have a little piece of paper they have to sign just to say, that they have checked it and then um, and then we come into park firming. So and now it's time to put the correct tires in, make sure everything's right again, and then uh, up onto the road and off we go for practice.
day three, but actually free practice or qualifying practice two because yesterday was cancelled and uh, actually looks pretty good. Clear blue sky, but a little windy, so be watching out for that. And uh, yeah, no, nothing crazy tonight. Just uh, more more laps in the bank, and we've changed the bikes a little, so we've got to look out. And test and trial these new things uh, so also got to trial and test uh, tire life so we're on worn tires just to see how they feel after three or four laps just to see what we can get out of them but uh, yeah a bit better than it was yesterday and uh, hopefully we'll be back shortly with uh, a bit of a review on how this evening goes Well, we're up here on Glen Country Road now. This is where the top 20, well, all, all riders they start a session will run from here, but the top 20 seated riders, all the setup base up here. So the bikes all are warm, it's engines warm. Just waiting for a bing bong on the on the uh, announcement from Clark the Course to uh, hopefully tell us we're on time. And it's 20 past now, so we've got about nine and a half minutes till the go time. So let's just go. Whoever is in front of me, but why did it have to be her this time? Oh, no. I let my love one go, and I can't stop, no, I can't do it. And you can see there that one of the first riders that's going to head out is in super bike and super stock qualifying, James Hillier, who had a very strong Monday night. And I have to say, when I went down to see him in the paddock earlier, he is more than happy. He said there's even more to come. He's out there on that WTF Honda. He's great on that, and he's happy with his super sport as well. That's water. Not That's not just damp patches, James. That's water drained yeah. down. What did I tell you? Yeah. I've been around in the car this morning, it was dry everywhere. The, the flags are obviously out, but they're not expecting it to be as bad as it is. There's some kind of <laughs> water pressure. That was wild. From James Hillier. Uh, Nerve-wracking. Uh, I mean, it's also exciting. The, I think the worst bit is when you're stood up there on the road, you, you stood on the track, you're, you're in a position with all the other riders and you're about to set your bike off for the first time of the day. I mean, you've had the bike apart and stuff, but you're pretty confident it's it's good to go. Um, like we mentioned, you've been through technical control, so everything everything should be 110%, but you, you still, it doesn't matter how many years that you come here, you can't get rid of the nerves that you get when you're stood there and you, you push your rider away and you say, see you in a bit, have fun, good luck, what, what, whatever you'd normally say to your rider. When he goes past that gate, it's, it's all in the hands of him then and the bike and it's, uh, yeah, it's not, it's, not an easy, it's not an easy time, but I mean, we sit and stand here and wait now and uh, wait to see him come back round in 17, 18 minutes and then uh, whether he goes through for another lap and then, uh, or, or he comes back here, it's, it's up to him because he's fueled for two laps. So it's a, it's, it's a waiting game now, but uh, everyone's in the same boat. I'm sure we all have the same feelings. So we'll, um, we'll sit here and wait and see what happens. Fantastic footage we're getting already tonight. <laughs> More than anything else, the fact that there's 40 mile an hour limit signs in the background. <laughs> and these guys have flat chat over the top. James Hillier, WTF Honda, getting a visor change. That's that. Yeah, Hillier heading back out to try and uh, get himself a decent lap on their stupid stocker.
Well, we've, uh, that's a wrap for practice two, which we're on day three. I'm already getting confused of what day we're on, I've lost track. But um, this is sort of where I get changed in the kind of the parts room on the WTF truck or um, kind of taking it over. But uh, I've just got changed and sorted out my kit of what I need to prepare ready for tomorrow's session. But uh, uh, no, I wouldn't say a frustrating night. We tried some things that um, still kind of chasing the feeling I want particularly on um, uh, the, the big bikes we're um, not far away but close and a little frustrating with times because uh, the result sheets they don't lie but they're often inconsistent because you some riders get clear laps or a good toe uh, I generally didn't get a good lap tonight there was uh, everyone had to deal with the damp patches that were still out with the rain we'd had but um, uh, you catch back markers, there was a few incidents with flags, yellow flags and uh, oil, a few engines let go so there was oil in places with uh, lack of adhesion flags so there's a few bits we could drill down and look at sectors but generally in practice I'd never like chase lap times, I'd just look and hunt for a feeling and then I suppose we can reference lap times but we've got a lot of data from over the years of uh, where perhaps I want to be and how I want the bike working and we can look at mid corner speeds and stuff so just referencing rather than to time we reference back to speeds through sections and things which is um, I guess more accurate for me accurate for me and how I like to work but uh, yeah, it's mad how quickly the week runs away with you we've only got two more practice sessions before the first super sport race um, so the pressure is kind of not on but um, there's not a lot of time left to try things that we want to try and, and work through and it's there's always a balance between perhaps me not quite being up to speed with the course and feeling there's an issue with the bike um, when it isn't actually the bike it's me which I, I feel at my age and experience I should know should know by now but we're, every every lap I do I get a little bit I say obviously I get a little bit better but um, the feeling comes and we just constantly little little changes with the bike just to help me find the feeling I want it's always a compromise here because there's whatever setup you have as on a roads course like this and at the speeds we're doing then um, the bike is gonna not always necessarily gonna want to do what I want it to so um, you just need to wrestle it through and uh, manhandle it so but uh, yeah another productive uh, night only four four laps tonight so probably could have done with more but it's a don't want to kind of wear myself out and also throw loads of miles on the bikes we want to keep them uh, keep them as fresh as we can and reliable as we can come racing so um, but yeah another step closer it's uh, feel like we're almost in the zone now it's crazy how this race just runs away with you and you lose time the days just fly by but um, yeah I feel pretty good and, and comfortable with things we're uh, making progress and uh, I think come race day or race days we've got super sport first on Saturday uh, and super bike race on Sunday so kind of be nice to get them out of the way and give us a good feel and, and uh, gauge on where we're at compared to everybody else but um, yeah we want some trophies so let's see but another good sleep tonight big debrief tomorrow with the guys go through on changes with the bikes and uh, <clears throat> small changes and um, then go again tomorrow for another few laps and see how we go I need to go and get some dinner and some rest uh, I'm heading over to the street diner pit stop cafe by, for, by the monster energy fan park for some uh, might go pizza tonight but um, thanks for watching uh, we're we've a lot of comments and questions already on episode one which we're gonna incorporate and answer as many as we can in future videos so if you've seen anything in this particular episode you want answering or has raised any questions then drop them in the comments let us know make sure you're subscribed hope you enjoyed this and uh catch up with us again tomorrow for episode three